Hello and welcome to the IB Biology IA conclusion overview. So we're going to go through what needs to be included in your conclusion in order to get six marks uh, in this section. So here's just the overview of the IA. You can see that the conclusion is worth six marks out of 24, so 25% of the, the whole IA. Now my usual recommendation is that you all hear this is the um, descriptors, the actual um, marking criteria for the conclusion section. Um, you can see this is just the overview of the conclusion if you want to read through it. My recommendation is always that the conclusion should be kind of like a page, if not a page and a half of um, writing in a sensibly sized uh, font. Um, so it needs to be fairly hefty, especially now it's worth a quarter of the IA. Previously, it was worth less. The conclusion and the, and the evaluation were the same section. So you really need to make sure that you've got enough detail in that conclusion to make sure that you get those six marks. Um, OK, the first sentence of your conclusion is going to answer your research question. So your IA started with a question. And at this point, you are going to answer it and say, yes, um, the IV has an effect on the DV or no, the IV didn't have an effect on the DV or something along those lines. So that first sentence of your conclusion answers the research question. Um, now, you don't have to follow this exactly, so you can still get six marks if you don't follow this uh, structure for the conclusion. But I think this just kind of hits all of the descriptors that you need to hit. So paragraph one is going to discuss all of your data. Things that you might want to discuss. Uh, will be the relationship within your data. So is there a positive correlation and negative correlation? Is there no correlation? What are the general trends? You might want to um, outline the anomalies. So obviously you will have um, circled or highlighted the anomalies in your results table and you won't have included them in your um, data processing and statistical tests and things. You might want to maybe suggest a few reasons as to what might have happened, um, why you've got those anomalies, if there's a reason. You don't want to discuss that in too much detail because obviously in your evaluation, you go in to think about the limitations. So don't discuss the limitations in full here, um, but if there are any reasons, you can mention them. If you've got particular high and low points in your data, so you might have a really high mean, uh, for one of your tests, you might have a really low mean. You might want to kind of highlight that and just say these could be the reasons. Um, again, standard deviations, you definitely want to discuss those. So you want to um, state which standard deviation is the highest and which is the lowest. You need to say what this means. So obviously, the higher the standard deviation, the um, larger the spread around the mean. So kind of the less reliable that data would be. Um, so definitely talk about your standard deviations. You might want to explain the results of the stats test in more detail. And also, if your stats test is a correlation and it's linked to the graph, you might want to talk about how um, your uh, correlation, if you pieces correlation coefficient, if that was, I don't know, minus 0.94, you can talk about how that's a negative correlation. You can see that on the graph. Um, does it link up to your graph? Um, oh, I've got there, do the, does the graph back up the result of the stats test? So you can kind of pull all of your data together if you want to, if there's a possibility to do that and describe how um, some of your data processing links to other data processing and how they back each other up or how they don't back each other up. And if, well, they kind of should back each other up though, but if they don't, there's obviously an exception to every rule. If they don't back each other up, then give reasons as to why that might be the case. In paragraph two, you want to explain your results using scientific explanations. So you need to say, I have got these results and the scientific reason for this is. So for example, if you've done the osmosis and potato investigation, which you wouldn't do because it's too easy, but if let's say you had, so you would explain using your scientific knowledge exactly why um, specific potatoes had increased in mass and some potato chips had decreased in mass. So you need to talk about the osmosis, the water potential, gradient, how um, the different solute potential affects the water potential and that affects the rate of diffusion, uh, the rate of osmosis, etc, etc. So you need to use your scientific knowledge. Now this might be scientific knowledge from the IB specification. For some of you, it might be um, scientific knowledge from outside the specification, depending on your IA, and that's fine. But as long as you have used IB level scientific knowledge to discuss and explain your results, 
within this paragraph. It could be two paragraphs, depending on how much you have to write. That's fine. Um, you need to make sure that it's I, IB level um, explanations. You might also want to link back to your background information here. So you can see in paragraph three, I've talked about that. So there might be some specific scientific knowledge and specific sources that you use in your background information. It's great to link back to those. You can still use the same sources in your conclusion and your background information. That's absolutely fine. Um, paragraph three, you can see that it says compare your results to published re results and also refer back to your sources. So published results would be other investigations, other research that's taken place that is similar to your research or um, within the same field that either backs up your results or your results are different to other results that other scientists have got. Now, if your results are the same, that's great. You can talk about kind of the reasons why you think that you got similar results to um, scientist X, Y and Z. Um, but also, if your results are different to published data, then do we have some reasons for that? Are there some suggestions as to why that might have happened? Again, remember, you go in to do your evaluation, so you don't want to launch into all of the limitations and how to improve them here, but you can certainly touch upon it if it's relevant to outline some limitations, and then you can talk about those in far more detail within your evaluation. But again, if you've got lots of um, published results or published data, then this might be two paragraphs long. That's absolutely fine. There isn't a limit as to how long it should be. Um, but me, my advice would be at least a page. I also often get students saying, um, oh, I can't find any, any um, similar studies or any studies the same. The whole point of the IA is you shouldn't find a study the same. It should be original research. So that there shouldn't be someone who has carried out the exact same investigation as you, because if there is, then what was the point in you doing yours in the first place? However, if yours is, let's say it's the uh, which date has the highest sugar content, there will definitely be some other research out there into the sugar content of dates or the sugar content of other fruits or um, Benedict's test or something. There will be other um other investigations that are similar or along the same lines. So it doesn't have to be, and it shouldn't really be, the exact same study as yours. As long as the independent variable is the same, or the dependent variable is the same, or they're very similar, that's fine. You can still use that. And obviously, you can say the reason why there might have been differences is because um, these scientists were looking into the sugar content of all fruits and not just dates or something along those lines. So um, there's lots of scope here. There will definitely be some published data or some published results that is in some way connected to your investigation. Um, you just need to go and find it and you might need to um, utilise any sort of online platform with research papers that your library can get you into um, or your teacher might have access, but definitely find something that you can compare to.